Hi, this is Flo from Cryptopsy, and you're watching Richard Metal Fan. Hey, what's up, guys? Episode 184 of Richard Metal Fan Interviews here at the Masquerade in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm on the tour bus with Cryptopsy, and I have the honor to speak with the legendary Flo Mournier. How are you doing today, Flo? Good yourself? Not too bad, not too bad. I know you're on this awesome tour right now with Abysmal Dawn and Hey, Warforged and the other band. Yeah, reaping, reaping as I can never fucking say it. It's so a it's a tough one. Yeah, I'm yeah. still trying to um, uh, figure it out. Yeah. Um, I want their merch though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how's the tour been? The most typical interview question ever. Uh, so far so good, man. Uh, no complaints. It's been really smooth. Everybody's super nice. Uh, just the way it should be, you know. Um, it's tough enough uh, being away from family and all that stuff, and um, you know, doing this every night and loading in, loading out. Um, just the fact that everybody's on the same page uh, always helps. So, awesome. so it's very good. Awesome. So, so your late latest album is Gorma Burns. Definitely one of my favorite albums so far of this year. Can you talk to me about the whole writing and recording process? How that all <clears throat> thing came to be and that good stuff. Do we have an hour? Do, do we have an hour? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could. Because <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, the the, the pandemic kind of um, um, set us back a few years. <laughs> it was supposed to be out maybe uh, two years ago. Maybe even uh, more. So we uh, we wrote it um, together. We uh, kind of secluded ourselves in this uh, chalet uh, up north in, uh, of Montreal and um, wrote most of the songs. Uh, I think that uh, Chris and I then f uh, kind of finalized the little details. And I think that Matt and Ollie were on a few sessions as well later on. Um, and then when we could actually... Um, meet up uh be together in the same place because there was lockdowns and stuff like that in montreal like pretty heavy stuff uh. um we uh, finally got uh the time to uh, start uh recording um and yeah so we we worked we worked it out on computer with chris playing guitar first and then set all the kind of parts together and the, the traps and what have you just like we've typically done for the last uh two eps Awesome. And and you mentioned there's, of course, there's the two EPs, the two EPs, two, one, and two. Is that like just picking up af after that, or, or do you consider it like picking it up after the self-titled or being as it has been over a decade since the self-titled? Do you consider this kind of like a fresh start for Cryptopsy in a well, way? Well, that's, that's a good question. Um, so we're not done with the Tome series. There will be a three. Um, Heard it here, folks. <laughs> yeah. There will be a three, hopefully. Um, we wanted to do, since uh, since we joined Nuclear Blast um, a few years ago and announced it this year, we wanted to do like a full length for, for them, and we hadn't done a full length in a while. So, no, it just, you know, this is just the way it happened. We just, uh, um, I mean, the, the writing team is the same. So, uh, and, it, and it's been for, for a long time. This is the longest... Um, uh, you know, unit that Cryptopsy's ever had. So, um, yeah, uh, there's more to come, but yeah, we wanted to do full length for this one for sure. All right. And were there any challenges making as Gorma Burns? Um, yeah, well, just just the just the, the the seeing each other to, to actually getting it done. Um, so uh, challenges. Yeah, it's like trying to record a song that you wrote written like a few years back, and and then trying to remember what to do. So. There was quite a lot of improv actually on this uh, recording for for myself, anyways, and uh, then you know having to learn it again or practice it for a tour was uh, was a little bit of a challenge. But yeah, things are coming in nice now. Awesome. And did like the pandemic at all sort of like impact the making of the album, like in terms of like the sound and everything? I think so, and I think that the lyrical content is quite appropriate to what's going on in the world today especially with the fires around the world <laughs> so yeah um definitely um had influence awesome and and of course being in like the death metal scene since like the late 80s or early 90s what makes you guys sort of, sort of like make music that's fresh while staying true to the sound well that's, a, that's another great question uh we always want to do something fresh we never want to repeat uh something there's like little elements of old stuff and newer stuff that's thrown in there just because it's just our way of, of trying to be clever i guess um but uh we always want to make something new and uh we wanted something a little bit darker 
uh, a little bit, you know, uh, I guess catchier and stuff and with the brutality of cryptopsy. So that's how it came about. I mean, we just, we, we, we take what we find is cool and we s scrap the rest usually. So, um, but it's, 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 it's pretty easy. I mean, <clears throat> Chris has a lot of, a lot of ideas and it, it was, it, it was actually just pretty easy coming up with stuff that was interesting that we want to play and then we like to hear yeah yeah and did you also wanted to like push about yourself and push like different boundaries on this album that y'all haven't done before yeah there's like you know certain things that are you know uh, that are pushed just like in any cryptopsy album i guess um <clears throat> at one point you know there's only so much pushing you could do but um it, it, it's 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 just what we want to hear, right? So if it comes out and there's you know some stuff that we we have to we have to push a little bit to uh, to do musically, then cool. But um, it's, it's it's just pretty much us. Uh, just, you know, uh, that's is all I can say for for that question. But yeah. Yeah, and I also want to turn back the clock because you know next year will mark 30 years of the debut Cryptopsy album, Blasphemy Made Flesh. In my opinion, one of the most underrated death metal debut albums of all time. So, what was sort of like the mindset going into making that album, and did you want to have that sort of like mindset that to get to carry on to like future albums like None So Vile and so on and so forth? Um, we definitely wanted to to because when when we we decided to change the name from Necrosis to Cryptopsy, we definitely wanted to do something more death metal, and that's still kind of a uh, a, a thrashier album, I find, in, in Blasphemy, but um, it, you know, it, it is 30 years ago, and the mindset that we had was just to make music and have fun back then. Um, you know, we weren't, uh, <laughs> no, no plans of conquering the world or anything, so um, it was just making good music at that time, and um, dealing with the, you know, the members that were there at that time, and just writing, you know, it, it, music is music, it, it, nothing really changes as, as, as far as what you want to do and what you want to hear, um, because it's, it's, it's death metal, we're, we're, we're here to, to, to please ourselves first, and hopefully if we like what we're doing, then others will like it as well, and the fans will like it as well, but there's no, um, I don't think there's like a, super set direction goal orientated mindset or anything like that no yeah and i know it's also 25 years of uh whisper supremacy a very underrated follow-up to of course the legendary nun so vile so what was the thought process going into making that album well because we had the uh, singer change in mike DeSalvo, we wanted to do something more technical definitely more more extreme and more technical where he could um he's just a freer to follow um along with the with the playing and the riffing and the beats a little bit more um and yeah you know we just decided to to, to push the envelope of music that's uh, that feels and has groove and at the same time super super extreme so that was whisper um yeah that was a tough one too <laughs> so, yeah and then, of course, getting back on back to the present, of course, you recently signed with Nuclear Blast Records. So how did they end up finding Cryptopsy? And, how, and what made you guys decide to to be like, let's sign to them? Yeah, you know, uh, I mean, first of all, Nuclear Blast is, you know, one of the biggest companies. Um, uh, a, a great buddy of ours who plays in his Bismol Don, Charles, uh, works for them. So it was kind of a no brainer. You know, we got a great offer from them um, and they've handled it very well. And um, you know, it's just, it, it, it was, it was a new step for us. So kind of, um, after all this, um, this crap that happened over the past years, it becomes kind of a rebirth. It becomes kind of like, oh my God, we're seeing each other again. When was the last time we've done this? Oh, well, you know, it's like four years ago, maybe even more. So yeah, it's like a kind of a rebirth with the album, with the signature on the record label, with tours starting up again. So yeah, it's like, um, things are picking up once more you know yeah and one thing i love about the cryptopsy is you always like mix up the brutality and also the groove at the same time how do you try to manage to like keep a balance of both of them in terms of the songwriting process um it's it, it, it's usually done you know like automatically it's just like kind of like oh yeah we're blasting we're blasting we're blasting we're blasting and then oh and then we breathe you know and then it's like 
it's creating extreme music, you know. It's uh, it's from one end of the spectrum to the other, uh, to, to the other, and instead of just being really just always on the same like level or always on the same speed or speak of the devil, there he is. Yeah. Um, so uh, it just it's just how we we've kind of always written, so it's kind of a no brainer for us. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got an interruption there there from Charles from Abysmal Dawn, folks. And the final question I wanted to ask you is talking about like your your drum set because I think you're, in my opinion, one of the most underrated metal drummers of all time. So I'm curious, what's like your drum set in terms of like drums, cymbals, pedals, and stuff? So, um, so I play pearl drums. I use Sabian cymbals. Uh, I'm using Axis right now, but um, I'm waiting on an email from the new pearl pedals from uh, John uh, Farkas from Pearl US and and Peter from Marinzak from. Canada uh, to try out the new Demon, uh, the, the new Demon Two, I think they're they're, they're called. Um, sticks, Vic Firth, uh, Heads, Evans, and I use the uh, Roland Electronics like trigger and stuff like that. And um, yeah, um, very simple setup. Uh, you know, traditional two two bass drums on top, uh, two uh, toms on top of the bass drum, two floor toms, and uh, less traditional about nine cymbals. <laughs> Awesome. So before we go, I just want to thank you for this interview. Great to be able to chat with you tonight. Is just anything else with the uh, Cryptops you'd like to plug? I'm also looking forward to seeing you next year at Maryland Death Fest. Yes. So is just anything else you would like to plug and for the release of Esgorma Burns to the well, viewers that are watching? Just thank, thank you very much for your support and for doing this. And uh, thank you guys for the support. And come and check us out if we're in a city near you on this tour. I mean, it's been a while. Let's uh, have some fun and drink some craft beers, right, Matt? Hell yeah. So everybody, flow from Cryptopsy. See you next.